Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the Bean Dip Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me yet again. Um, Yeah, dude, fuck yeah. Just been a, you know, busy week as usual. That's a dog barking outside. I don't know if somebody just got home next door. I'm sure you guys can hear this fucking asshole. I mean, that's a good dog when they're, like, barking, right? When they're just when they're barking at random people, it's cool. Those dogs are the worst, though. Those freaking dogs that when you're you're walking by someone's yard, and and they just jump scare your ass. Right, those dogs know what they're doing. They're assholes, dude. Like I know you guys, some of you guys are freaking dog lovers, dude. But <sighs> sometimes I wish somebody would just poison those dogs. You know what I mean? Just put some fucking some fucking crazy pills and a piece of meat and let them go to town you know what i mean or maybe you don't even have to kill them just put their asses to sleep put some sleeping medicine and some kibbles and bits and have those fucking dogs pass the fuck out anyway you guys are just gonna have to deal with that fucking dog this is uh this ain't the i don't got a studio yet i'm literally doing it in my parents room not their room specifically but a room in their house so deal with it um you know this is a is an interesting topic that i'm going to be talking about uh you know i've been i've been like having a bunch of sick people around me and not not just like your minor cold or or like you're just typical whatever not even covid it, it's uh they're just like really sick, right? Like some of them have cancer and all that. And, you know, basically what it comes down to is the the health provider Kaiser. And, um, you know, growing up, uh, my family, we always had Kaiser, you know. And um, I think not until one of my friends had cancer, she had lung cancer. And... Uh, that's when um, I really started to question it. And, you know, even coming from other people, you like today, you know, I was reading up on reviews of like people that have had Kaiser. And uh, there was one uh, that said uh, her fought this this late this lady's 82 year old father. I think he had some lung issue or whatever, or stomach issue. And he went to Kaiser. They didn't give him his, like, they didn't uh, have him see his doctor first. It was just a random doctor. Uh, the doctor said that everything was clear. Um, and he was, I think, a couple days later, he was still fucked up. So he went back. They gave him antibiotics even i guess when he called back to make an appointment his doctor had said damn bro you don't sound too good i think it was his lungs and so they put him on medicine and then like three days later the the dad died right and i think it's like little little situations like that like say for instance with my friend she during the pandemic she had a lung cancer and, uh, you know, at first, so like them find them like not knowing what it could be. That's, that's, uh, I think that's typical for most. I'm, I'm sure there's doctors and other healthcare providers that don't know what things could be right away. Um, I think the thing that fucked with me the most was, uh, when they did find out it was lung cancer. So it was stage three and then it just developed into stage four. And when they found out it was stage four, with, you know, just like straight up off uh, off the bat, uh, the doctor tells my friend, you only have two years to live. Um, start making arrangements. This is Kaiser, right? They pretty much told her, just give up. And, you know, she went back to her, um, her boss, because she has a real tight um, relationship with her boss. And homeboy was like, fuck that, you know, Kaiser sucks, you know, like, and he put, 
he put her on his health care and, you know, she decided to go to UCLA and pretty much right away, you know, they're like, oh, don't even worry about it. People survive cancer these days. Right. And that alone was like enough for me to be like, dude, fuck that place. And then, you know, I have a family member that's really sick right now. And, you know, people are coming to see her and stuff like that. And one everybody, every every older person that has, you know, been reaching out has been saying Kaiser sucks ass, dude. And so I decided I was like, you know what, I want to see. I want to see what the what the hype is all about, right? Because I'm I'm not about the hype. I I don't I don't give into hype, you know. Uh, that's just not my thing, you know. Uh, I like to I like to see shit first, right? I have to see if like before I jump on the hype train, you know. And I went on to to see some reviews. Let me see if I could pull some up. The one, the story I just told you was a review. That was a straight review, dude. What a damning review that is. Like, dude, she straight up said that Kaiser killed her her fucking dad, bro. And then not not to mention, uh, they went through like some, they went through a lawsuit. There's an article that was posted in September that they went um through a lawsuit for mishandling let me see lawsuits uh there was one let me see what is it yeah so kaiser permanente the healthcare giant has agreed to a 49 million dollar settlement as a result of its unlawful disposal of hazardous materials, improper management of other medical waste, and mishandling of protected patient data. And Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. There are just sounds coming from everywhere. I have the bitch-ass dog over here. My parents that are just deciding to freaking vacuum at 1.30. Let me see about Kaiser Reviews. You guys can enjoy the sound of fucking vacuuming right here, right next to the door. Jesus Christ, dude. Let's see. Uh, okay. There's that one. Let's see. But so so many of these. So many of these are like one star, one star, two stars, right? That can't be good for a hospital or a health. Dude, if your healthcare provider has one star, dude, you might as well go to the that one doctor from The, Simps- the Simpsons. Hi, everybody. Just, <laughs> just give your life to somebody like that. Let's just read this one from Katie from Yuba City, California. This was reviewed October 18th, 2023. Kaiser is the worst insurance and healthcare I have ever received. As a woman with an urgent health issue, cervical surgery, they completely forgot about my appointment and have not called me back despite my multiple attempts at calling and leaving voicemails to be seen by someone. I've had to seek care outside my Kaiser HMO and pay out of pocket because the healthcare has dropped the ball so hard and no other clinics except Kaiser. That's that's another crazy thing I read is that, you know, when your health, when your insurance is under Kaiser, you have to go to them. Right. And that's got to suck. Like, let's say. Let's say you don't know about that. Right. Let's just say you don't know that you can't go to other hospitals because you have your insurance is, is Kaiser. And you live in an area where there is no Kaiser, but somehow it's provided, you know. Um, you, you, you can't go anywhere. You have to deal with them. And I don't know, like what one, one person says it like in, in the reviews, like, oh, you have to pretty much advocate for yourself with these doctors and this and that. And that's probably something you have to do generally with hospitals. Um, 
can see from the beginning it was disappointment before subscribing. I was guided by an agent of my county that explained several options for Medicare coverage. I ended up selecting the advertised five star Kaiser Permanente, the advertised five star Kaiser Permanente pr program. The first thing I did was try to arrange knee injections. These were noted in the literature as a covered service. The doctor I spoke with denied they, they as in Kaiser, did knee injection. I told him it's advertised in the brochure. He just denied it. Damn. Yeah, and, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm just going to, my mom is sick right now. Um, she's really sick. And, you know, in the beginning, l luckily she was able to find a, a doctor that's like being super honest and straight up. But in the beginning, they gave her the runaround so freaking crazy, dude. Her stomach was bloating. She was building like liquid inside of her body. And, it, you know, she was in pain. And, you know, she goes for a doctor's visit. And one of the doctors simply touches her belly, her stomach, and says, Oh, you have IBS. This fucking dude literally let her go home thinking she had irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. You know, she, she came back to the house and, you know, I had made my, my, um, my family some bomb veggie soup, right? Cause you know, I, I, sometimes you need to just clean your shit out, right? Too much McDonald's pizza. Dude, when you live in poor areas, dude, there is no healthy options. Okay. We're not in the poorest. We're in Pico Rivera, but like, God damn, dude, we live next to like three burger spots and like two pizza spots and like five churches, not churches, chicken, actually church. So it's just a weird area. But, um, you know, I made them a veggie soup and pretty much because right she and she had to go for at least almost two weeks thinking she had irritable bowel syndrome. And I was telling her, you don't have IBS. The, the soup that I made was meant to clean you out, right? I put spinach, garlic, broccoli, Chinese broccoli, potatoes, carrots, all this good shit in there. And, you know, and then she's like trying to follow this list of oh, what I can and can't eat for IBS. And I told her, I was like, dude, yeah, I call my mom, dude, dude. Um, I know several dudes with with IBS and they literally tell you that when you have IBS anything makes you take a shit dude you can fucking drink water and you got to take a shit you can breathe air and need to fucking do diarrhea it's it's your 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 bowels are just so sensitive with everything you're just fucked i went to this open mic one time and this comedian it was like this weed um, open mic spot, right? And you pay a dollar and they'll give you some kind of weed product. And they gave us root beer, like a THC root beer. Um, and right away, homeboy knew right away. He was like, Oh fuck, this shit is going to make me shit for sure. He just knew it. Right. And there was at least three separate times in, in the span of maybe like an hour, hour and a half this dude had to go and take a shit, right? And for like, I don't know, for like months, they they were keeping my mom in the dark. Oh, we don't know, we're, we have to do this, uh, this, this, like just leaving her in the fucking dark, dude. Giving her the goddamn runaround, right? And it, I was, I was, uh, let me see, there is this other article I had read and that's, it's not like a, that's not like a just so happens kind of thing, right? Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's this part. So look at, so I'm going to read this to you guys. Uh, over the years, Kaiser has been accused of using um, tactics as cost containment strategies the HMO has also been accused of promoting less costly preventative procedures while concealing information about other elective and or more expensive services. So they, they pretty much, 
want you, they want that one runaround. They want you to just, because it's, since the hospital is going through their own insurance, they're keeping costs super low, super down. They're not really trying to pay shit. They just want to give you the runaround until it's for sure legit you're going to die, right? Uh, patients often complain that while it's easy to get services with the primary care doctor, services involving specialists are more difficult to utilize. Uh, it goes on. Um, another complaint about Kaiser members is the fact that Kaiser Healthcare and insurance are the same company, which I just said, making it easier for them to minimize costs on the insurance side by ordering the minimum number of diagnostic tests and creating multiple visits with multiple copays. For example, with traditional medical coverage, the hospital, your doctors, and your insurer are separate entities. Your doctor or the hospital can order tests or prescribe treatments. It's then up to your insurance company to pay their part or deny coverage, right? So it's just this whole thing, and you know, uh, I I had I had Kaiser for a little bit, right? Um, I didn't have anything wrong with me to even you know say there was a complaint. I think one time I was gonna go get COVID testing, or like uh yeah, tested for COVID, or maybe even get. For those of you, I'm fucking vaccinated. All right, I'm not. I'm not part of those people that are like, yes, you must get vaccinated. I I did it just to go to college, and it was a waste because I dropped out. So I'm just vaccinated for nothing. Um, you could still get COVID. You know, it doesn't matter. But whatever. Um, yeah, I had it for a short period. Um, here's here's the thing about also kaiser is they have so many fucking buildings or so many rooms like dude i got lost <laughs> i guess that's my only complaint against kaiser is like dude your directory of where like where things are is shitty i i had to ask random people where is this where is that right this old lady that looks like she's dying in a wheelchair i was like hey can you help me find the this place and it's terrible you know but I don't know. I I think I think more so than just what Kaiser is. You guys like everybody definitely has to be careful. You know what I mean? But I think like having uh, seen some of my friends deal with this and um I think in general, I was talking about it with my homie that I feel like when when you're going to the hospital you you have to treat it as if you're taking your car to the mechanic, right? Because, first of all, like, all these doctors and all that, like, most of, right, mo most of these hospitals are involved with, I'm assuming, I don't know if this is true, but I'm, they're, they're involved with the, the fucking big farm, right? I think automatically most spots are just going to prescribe you some pills or medicine, right? It's like, oh my God, I have a headache. You have a headache? Okay, here's some fucking Norco. You know, go fucking just kill your liver because you got a headache, you know? And th they'll do that. They'll just be like, oh, well, it's just this. And here, take that. Right? And it's the same thing, like, if you if you take it to a mechanic, like, you just be like, oh, well, um, my car is doing, I don't know what's going on. Like, can you just check it? It, it doesn't seem right. They're, they're not going to fuck... Dude, they're going to find other things before the main thing that you actually need fixed because they don't even know what they're looking for. You don't even know what you're looking for. So they're just going to find random things, even if it's something that probably doesn't even need to be fixed. They'll probably just be like, oh, well, it's kind of old, so you need to get that replaced. And, and, you know, same thing with my mom. Like, I guess she has high blood pressure and, you know... The I, I personally felt the blood pressure is making her stomach bloat. Um, and I don't know, they just kept her on the, the it just it just didn't seem to fall in line with me. Like, I, I didn't understand that, you know, she was sicker than just having high blood pressure. And just to have that as like this, you know, this is the main thing for now. Just fucking take these fucking pills. 
it just trips me out. You know what I mean? Um, I heard I've heard Blue Cross is a is a good is a good provider, but I don't know. It's it's weird because it's like <laughs> you're you're kind of fucked one way or the other. If you if you don't have hella money, you're screwed, dude. Like I I remember I I had Medi-Cal or Medicaid, whatever the hell it is. And you know I go to the doctors and, dude, I think based on how good your insurance is is how long you're gonna have to wait in that fucking waiting room if you got some if you got medical medicaid dude expect to just die there okay they're not gonna come see you when you're ready they're gonna see you after the doctor got done fucking one of the nurses he's eating a sandwich on a on one of the fucking hospital beds he's i don't know fucking Checking out the OnlyFans pages he's subscribed to. Some of the nurses that work on there. I don't know. But they they, they will lag it. I showed up one time just to get a checkup. Just, just to get a blood work, checkup, all that. And I'm in there and there's, there's a dude, an older dude with a messed up looking hand. There's, and there's an old lady that looks like she's just on the verge of death, dude. Like probably a couple more years. You know, she's a bedridden forever let's just say that and uh you know i'm there i'm there like fucking over an hour and i'm like bro if they haven't even seen you guys yet like <laughs> i'm screwed you know i'm i'm screwed if 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 that's the case and i didn't want to wait it's like dude i'm just here for a checkup dude like you guys could get me in and out like nothing and, you know, I bust a Karen. I became a Mexican Karen that day. And I, I, I went up to the, whatever, you, the fucking secretary, the nurse secretary. I don't know what the hell you call them. I went up to the window and I was like, hey, dude, can you just cancel my appointment? This is bullshit. Like, I've been here over an hour. I'm just here to do blood work. This is retarded. I'm just going to leave. I have I have other st- things to do, you know, I. I'm sure I can come back for... An- and she was like, Supp- what? You're leaving? No, like... And I'm just like, well, what the fuck, dude? Is a fucking... How many people actually work here? Is it just like one doctor per building? And, you know, I... You know, white people are right, dude. Be a Karen, dude. <laughs> Be a fucking Karen, dude. What's that? The... The squeaky wheel doesn't squeak any no i don't know <laughs> well the squeaky wheel gets the oil whatever the fuck it is but dude sometimes you got to be a goddamn karen you know what i mean because these places will just sit on their asses until it's like oh yeah you're ready okay come here sit down you know and uh i don't know man maybe you guys could tell maybe you guys have different stories like maybe it doesn't it's not just Kaiser, but I'm, I've just been hearing like a lot of bad stuff about them, you know, and it's just one of those things that it, like, it kind of reminds me like Kaiser's like, it's corporate, right? It just seems like it's corporate. So you're going to have to go through all these faculties before you actually can be seen and shit. And, you know, I think the best thing about it is that, you know, it's why not talk about this stuff? You know what I mean? Why not mention it? Because a lot of the times people have no idea of anything, right? They're just like, they're just, oh, well, you know, I, I never heard anything, this and that. Like, oh, they always, and like, you know. We've all known about like the placebo pill, placebo effect and all that. There, sometimes doctors will just give you pills that don't do anything, you know, and that might not even be, that's probably not even just Kaiser, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, you, you think about how like, how doctors are and, and uh, whatever, and just the, like, I don't know if it is, 
any anybody seen that documentary? Um, fuck, what's that fat guy's name with the glasses? He made this documentary called Sicko. And basically, it was about like hospitals in America and one uh, this lady. I forgot what hospital or healthcare she was working for, but she basically admitted that she helped this dude die because it would benefit her financially. It would benefit the the hospital financially, right? It wouldn't be so costly, and. What happened was, uh, yeah, he died, and um, you know she knew she could have saved him. So what ended up happening? She ended up exposing herself and the hospital that this dude died, and because I let him die, she got a raise, a promotion, and all this shit, dude. And uh, so what's uh, doctors are already d- the way they're gonna be, and then you have Kaiser that has all these fucking things that you have to go through before you can actually find the root of the problem like my friend who had lung cancer like i said it probably could happen with anybody but to me sometimes it's just bullshit dude like she got fucking sick mid mid uh well she was sick even when the first variant came out but like mid shutdown like they said she had pneumonia and then from pneumonia, they say, oh, it's actually cancer. Like, how does, how does that work? What is that step to where it's like you thought it was one thing, but then it turns out to be something else and then progresses to the next level out of nowhere? Not only did you, like, fuck her over in her diagnostic, but then because you fucked up, you end up having to tell her, oh, you only have two years to live. There's nothing we can do. You know what I mean? That that shit is fucking nuts, dude. I honestly wish this dog had Kaiser so they could kill him off. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ, dude. Fucking dumbass dog. Um. Yeah, man. And, you know, it's just the... It, it's what's what's like been like the Jesus fucking Christ, dude. This fucking dumbass dog, bro. Um, it's just been like the 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 main like thing to talk about right now with my mom being sick and you know everybody's been telling her all her friends, my sisters, Kaiser sucks. You know they're gonna give you the runaround. They're gonna keep you in the dark. You know, and and pretty much it sucks because it's like by the time you probably find out, it's probably too late, you know. So I guess what I'm just saying is like, be careful, people. You know what I mean? You know, whether it's Kaiser or any kind of um, hospital health insurance, you got you got to fight for yourself. These doctors, nurses they have no idea what the hell is going on. You know what I mean? And they they won't, they're not going to just try to save your life right away. They're going to give you some bullshit first. Oh, you got a stomach ache? Here's some Tylenol. It's like, what the fuck? Tylenol? Take these twice a day and then we'll see what happens in two weeks. It's like, what the hell? Am I just a guinea pig while you find out? Like, dude, how many people have certain sicknesses and it's been, how is it just always an experiment? Magic Johnson, I need you to fucking make a hospital, bro. Somehow you're surviving looking great. He is a billionaire, though. He's, he's doing fine. That that billionaire money got him looking AIDSless, you know. But yeah, man, just uh, I don't know, and it's it's crazy that there's, you know, there's articles on it, and it's just so funny seeing some of these like uh, I don't know what you call them, 
like what does this one say someone say we are not afraid of kaiser or whatever i don't know man and i heard i heard the complaint uh like to make a complaint about say kaiser is shitty too you know like yeah you can make a complaint but nothing gets um how do you say it? acknowledged yeah look at this one kaiser permanente has a rating of 1.83 stars from 237 reviews dude people should start <laughs> fucking looking at the ratings of the hospital they're going to or like where's the yelp on kaiser right high level try yeah damn look at this er and kaiser in general are awful <laughs> The communication is horrendous. I'd rather have field surgery than be seen here. Damn. The absolute worst customer service. That's hilarious. Just to, just to call customer service for a hospital customer. Both chat and 800 number. The volume is so low that you strain to hear your every other word. Reddit? Is Kaiser really that bad? Former Kaiser patient and grandparents have... Kaiser special needs plans. Dude, supposedly they had a lawsuit too because they weren't they weren't treating um mental health services appropriately. They they weren't the right funding wasn't going into it. Let me see. I fortune what? What did I say? Which line? You need to really stick up. Yeah, see? Fortunately, my parents for my for, from my parents to my own, the one thing I will say, which likely extends to other providers, is that you need to really stick up for your own case if you really believe they're missing something. Two close friends potentially would have had their cancer or other condition missed or delayed if they didn't keep pushing for regular checkups, general communication, etc. Uh, good, in my opinion. Their mental health does admittedly, admittingly suck. So does the Sutter system, by the way, to be fair. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Right. It, um, you know, every there's, I guess there are different reviews, but it's just so crazy just how, like, I've heard more bad things about Kaiser than actual good things. So, you know, it's just for every everybody. You could have you you know you have your own experiences, your own opinion, and you know if Kaiser's actually working for you, I mean, don't listen to this. You know, um, who's better, Blue Cross? I've heard good things about Blue Cross. Yeah, if you're looking for high quality care and convenience, Kaiser's Wellness Focus Essentials. And one-stop shop of care could be the right fit for those interested in having more choices and providers and greater flexibility in their care. BCBS is a good choice. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I didn't. I didn't really have a problem with Kaiser, but then again, I'm not going through anything serious, you know. So it just sucks when people are are in that vulnerable. state situation you know because you're kind of like fuck if if they suck where where do i go next you know so yeah fucking healthcare dude take care of yourselves guys fucking diet exercise so you don't have to see those fucking criminal ass fucking doctors dude where's fucking batman when you need him dude Jesus Christ, dude, go fucking jump into these buildings and find out the main culprit, you know? Anyway, uh, you know, I started I started my new job this past week on a Wednesday. Um, it was chill, a little bit too chill for my liking. Uh, a couple things, it was kind of funny. Um, so I was like talking to the bartender who I technically was training with, um, what I say? I was like, uh, I was like, so what are they really strict about? And she was like, ah, you know, don't do this, don't do that. And, you know, they don't really like it when 
we just stand around and don't do anything. It's like, okay, all right, I get that. Let me try to seem busy anyway, just to like see what I could bust. Bro, I was there for eight and a half hours, right? <clears throat> There's only so many times you could wipe that fucking counter. And throughout those eight and a half hours, I could probably count the drinks that I made. I could say I probably made 15. I mean, there could have been like maybe more than that because the the bartender was also, there's another bartender there that, you know, she was training me, but it's like, bro, you, you want us to not stand around and work but it's like there's nothing to do no literally there was nobody in the room of the bar it's a bowling alley we don't even have fucking cups like regular fucking cups jesus christ guys no wonder fucking podcasters fucking start their shit early in the morning because this is when everybody's doing shit all right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Um, had to take a little pause. Too much. Oh, my God, dude. There's crazy shit happening all around me. Uh, we're just going to have to get through this episode with the, the, the fucking sounds all around me, all right? Um, like I said, yeah, I got that job, and... Yeah, right out, they're like, oh, they're strict about you not, or you just standing around. Dude, yeah, nothing to do except stand around. There's no, but there's people that come to the bar, but it's like two every other hour or every hour. You know, it's whatever. Cool little job. Um, The other thing, which is like, to me is egregious. It's fucking crazy, right? They, uh... They, the place does provide you with six free bowling games, so if you and, like, a couple of your homies want to come through, you can play for free. Here's the, here's, that, that's, that's cool. Here's the downside to that. I, if I bring my homies and we're there to chill, they can drink. I can't drink. You know, and I don't know why anytime I tell this to people, somehow they understand it better than me. Oh, they don't want anybody, uh, you know, being drunk in in the in the spot. It's like, dude, what the fuck? It's my day off, bro. You think I'm gonna get fucked up at a bowling alley? Come on, dude. I can have a couple drinks though, right? And it's like I was there for the first day to like sign paperwork and all that. And as I'm waiting there for my Uber, I asked the the bartender, like, hey, uh, th- this is a separate day, by the way, besides the first thing. He's like, hey, can I get a can I get a drink while I wait? And she's like, oh, yeah, there's no drinking for us. I was like, what? Not even when we're on our day off? And she's like, yeah, they don't want it. It's like, dude, fuck those six free games, dude. I'm not bringing nobody here. I'm not coming through. What the fuck am I going to come through here for if I can't even drink? I'm just going to watch my friends have the greatest time. I'm going to be working while I'm not working. That's bullshit, dude. You know? Nah, fuck that. But, I mean, whatever. A job's a job. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to keep it until who knows how long. Um, Probably just until I could find another. I, I, To me, I like the regular bartending life. You know, I like regular bartending, being at a bar, being able to just like bullshit with the customers and you know make drinks i i that's my shit i don't like working i don't want to work at a chuck e cheese bar mind you this isn't a chuck e cheese bar it's some kind of famous bowling alley in studio city but it's just that that shit really fucked with me it's like dude i can't even come here on my day off and have a beer not one fucking beer I don't know. I, I, what do I like about it? 
I don't I don't really know what I like about it. I had one night there and it just seemed it just was boring. You know? Just the it just doesn't give you bars that they have a really nice bar room, right? And actually they have this other bar called the Animal Bar, which they don't use often. They only use when they have events. And, uh, <coughs> dude, honestly, if I could just work in that bar, that uh, it's called the animal bar. If I could just work in that room every day or not every day, cause you know, I, I need other days off, but if I could just work in that room, just have that spot as a solid dude, I would love that, bro. The, the animal bar, the little spot that they have above is badass actually. It's pretty dope, but they only use it for fucking random events, you know, so I don't know. I'm glad I got it because it's like it's a good start towards transitioning over there. And, um, you know, this week, this month is a little hectic. I don't think I'm gonna be able to work a lot there this month, which I think they're cool. They're, they're down to be lenient. You know, I do like that. The the manager seems like a chill dude you know what i mean he seems chill i mean you could never you could never you got to take their chill with a grain of salt you know especially managers man like they'll 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 like flip on you quick you know what i mean they they probably start off being like yeah man cool yeah we're so happy we love you yeah come through and then like two months in they're just bitches dude just fucking bitches bro so yeah, it's always cool to have like a, a a cool like, you know, little whatever back to, you know, in the beginning, but yeah, I know managers change quickly. Um Yeah, it's just it's just not my thing, not my kind of style of bartending. Uh I know I need a job, but things <laughs> things are going to have to change soon. It's just not my style, you know. Um not enough cougars, not enough drunk cougars, not enough uh, perverted old men. Not that I need the perverted old men, but they just, they complete the bar. You know what I mean? If there's not one perverted old man at the bar, is it even a bar? I don't think so, you know? You need at least one perverted old man, uh, one drunk ass bitch, you know? Like just she's just the alcoholic bitch that comes all the time, and um, what else is like an essential to make to have as a bar? Perverted old man, drunken whore, and and maybe just like the the random middle aged couple that comes through. You know what I mean? They come in like every once a, once every other week right and they're just alcoholics and i think when if you have those three characteristics of customers in your bar it's an actual bar and uh yeah we there was like nobody at the bar top nobody you know so i know i'm talking a lot of shit about it i'm, I'm glad i got hired you know um but it was just it was it was like an easy one just to get real quick, you know. I'm 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 gonna look for another spot probably in a couple months, you know. Um, just as I I'm like finding my feet around there in L.A. And who knows, maybe it could be like a one day spot or something. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but I think I did I think I did find out, or I I, I came up with what I, I'm gonna be doing, you know. Even though I'm gonna be moving towards Hollywood it's not necessarily a, a full-on move where I'm like gonna be designated somewhere because I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a van I'm gonna buy a van and you know I've done it before I used to do some van living I did it for about several months uh, but now I'm just gonna get back into it and go hard on it um, but the, the the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna get a van I'm gonna try to get a van from a police auction right and I've I've always heard good things when it comes to police auctions. They sell fucking vehicles for cheap, dude. I think one of my comedian homies uh, got a car for like 
five hundred bucks, and then he paid like a couple. He he paid paid an extra hundred dollars for, I think tires and something else. Um, which is not bad, dude. Cars are fucking expensive, dude. Super expensive, and so I want fuck it, dude. I'm I'm gonna go get a I'm gonna go get a police. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a police auction, get a car. I don't care if crime has committed in that been committed in that car. I don't care if it's a haunted ass car, right? I'm gonna get it, right? Hey, that I feel like that would be a a cool ass like comedy movie. Where like this this desperate guy needs needs a vehicle to to you know get around town and he decides to go to this police auction and gets a haunted car right and like basically it's this like ghost of a criminal that is haunting him he's like bro you got to commit these crimes before I leave your car right you got to go rob this liquor store it's like a bunch of like petty little theft crimes you know what i mean this was risking his life just to get the ghost out of his car i think that would be cool if they end up like befriending each other it's like nah dog i need you here you know you uh your haunting presence completes me you know but i don't know yeah I, i that's what i'm gonna bust and hopefully you know if i get the van i'll i'll do the podcast in there too we won't be surrounded by people vacuuming and dogs barking I'll just be her- surrounded by fucking homeless people rambling to themselves. At least it won't be as loud. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah. I don't know, man. This is a fucking dude. So many things happening around me, dude. I got. I got to start this shit fucking sooner sometime. You know? So crazy, dude. Cleaning the carpet at 2 in the afternoon. That's what they're doing over there. They're cleaning the carpet. Talk about a day off. Jesus Christ. Thank God I'm a fucking comedian, dude. All we fucking care about is just telling jokes. Not cleaning carpets and paying your bills, you know? All right, everybody. I think that's it for today. The fucking dog wants me to stop talking. Fucking. See, there it is. He's like, shut the fuck up, bro. The episode is over. All right, guys. Well, um, you know, uh, I got that show coming up this month, the 25th. If you guys can come see it, dude, I need all the support, all the love just to show these owners that we could throw a badass show, you know, because homeboys already being sketch as fuck about, oh, there's a fucking fight that day. I don't know what I'm going to shut the fuck up, dude. No one's going to come to your fucking bar to see a fight between two dudes that nobody knows about, right? Everybody just goes to a homie spot. You go to your homie spot, get drunk. You don't have to pay for drinks. And everybody pitches in for the fucking fight. So, any, anyway, I have to talk to him today. But, um, yeah, come through, support us, support co- comedians. We always love that shit. You know, everything can be found on my Instagram. And, um, hell yeah, I think that's it, guys. Uh, I will catch you next time. Love you all. Peace.